Hello, it's Andy at Duranglers. Today we are going to be tying one of my favorite jig nymph flies. Uh, you see a lot of jig caddis, but they seem to be a little bit brighter color than what I like to tie and fish for the animus or here in Colorado. So we're going to be tying the cadatimus, the animus caddis, the anacaddis, the anapertagon. It's not really a pertagon. Anyway, check it out. All right, so let's kick it off. I am using a Fulling Mill Jig Force Short Black Nickel. You could use their standard Jig Force. I just like the hook gap on this bad boy. And then I'm size 14, and then I'm also using a 3.2 or 1 8 inch uh, slotted tungsten bead. You could go smaller, you could go bigger if you wanted. I'm not too big on going much bigger than this. You can also use some lead wire. I don't. You know, I'm tying some kind of the way I like it. You can add more lead wire. I've done it before uh, to give it a bit more sink rate. But uh, let's start off. What I'm using is just a two different threads, actually. Uni thread, uh, just an olive, and six aught. Six aught to bulk up the body because most of this body is going to be thread. So let's get after it. You could just use your initial thread, which I, or initial thread, the thread you uh, finish her with, which is going to be more of a chartreuse uh, 70 denier UTC thread, but takes a little bit longer. Shoot, this still takes a little bit longer. I like to go down the hook shank a little bit. Kind of gives it that curvature. Anyway, we're... Uh, i found I've had a lot of really good success with this fly. It's more of a representational fly than, you know, that standard Pertagon. Which, hey, by the way, did you know Pertagon in Spanish means pellet? Are you fishing pellets to flies if you're fishing a Pertagon? Maybe. Look it up. Don't take my word for it. Anyway, I'm just bulking up the body here with olive. I l it doesn't really matter. I just like having a like color for the bulking up this body. You could use this for the rib too if you want, but I'm not going to be doing it. You'll see what I mean here in a second about that. Wrap it up. <clears throat> Give it a one or two turn whip finish. It doesn't really matter because that's all going to get covered up later. Cut it. So we got a little bit of a bulked out body. And now I am using UTC 70 denier ultra thread and this is a chartreuse color called you can just use straight chartreuse if you wanted it chartreuse uh, olive this is a watery olive which i tend to use sometimes you'll see those caddis you know when you do some sampling they're a, more of a pale color you could even use like a yellow or a tan. Ooh, I didn't want to do that. Oh, well, we're cutting it up. Sometimes, you know, happy little mistakes when you nick your thread with your hook point. Everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people do it. I'm going fast here. So what I'm doing here, too, is I'm also spinning the thread counterclockwise. Unravels the thread, makes it lay down a little flatter for the body. I like doing that when I'm building this body, but when I get to creating the rib, I like to let this cord out, meaning it's going to twist up. You'll see what I mean here in about five seconds here. But anyway, I've you know, I found that this is one of those flies for the Animus, for a lot of local waters, the Piedra, the Upper San Juan, Upper Dolores. I will, or shoot, even on the... South Platte, um, up, definitely up on the Arkansas with a lot of different caddis species up there. Anywhere you're going to find caddis. So this will be one of my favorite flies to toss on as a, you know, the anchor fly on a Euronymph setup. Maybe even a, uh, under, an under an indicator, under a dry dropper. So everyone's favorite, Sharpie, Black Sharpie. I am sharpening this thread 
can see that there. Just giving it a little bit of color. You know, about an inch to inch and a half of that thread. Leaving about an eighth of an inch so I can wrap that back to the back. And then when that th when the black starts, as you wrap, wrap forward evenly spaced if you can. And what you're doing is you're creating a very distinct rib. I've been doing this for a long time, but I will give credit to Cheech at Flyfish Food. He uh, kind of coined the term mill spec uh, for this pattern. Just kind of gives it a really slender body, but it almost gives it a quill look, which I really like. And then uh, UV flow. And I'm going to cover that body with that. Thin. You don't have to go crazy, but if you give it a little bulk, sometimes that adds to the effect of a caddis. So, get it there. Try and get it as even as you can. That typically flows pretty well over the... <coughs> Lost my cap. And then, I like to, you know, go back and forth a little bit, let it even out, and then boom. You know, everyone's favorite thing, watching UV resin cure on YouTube. And I do this before I do my other materials. I don't think it makes a huge difference once you tie those in. Just gonna let that cure for another second or two. You know, I might hit it again later. So there we go. Did okay on that rib. So next favorite material to use on a whole lot of different stuff. Straggle string, straggle legs, not straggle string, straggle legs by Semperfly. In black, pull off a little clump of that. A little clump of that goes a long way. I had my little clump and that disappeared again too. So I'm going to tie that cord in, try and sometimes that UV will cure and get your bead where you don't want it. So tie that in right behind the bead. Oh, come on. And wrap that back a little bit. You're going to be bulking up behind this bead with some dubbing, but this I think adds just a great look of legs. You can use it on other nymphs and to even dry flies I've done. But it's definitely got that crinkly caddis leg look. And I usually go one, two, three wraps. Just back to back. Just kind of pull it out with your fingers so we spread those legs out. You got a good leg effect. Tie it off. Cut it off. And then, final material, ice dub, UV black. You don't necessarily need to use ice dub, but I think this just adds to the effect of what you're going for. Some of those legs will want to get stuck under the thread. You can pick them out, not a big deal. Sometimes I'll do a really loose, buggy dubbing look on the head of this fly. Sometimes I'll do it real tight. Depends on how I'm feeling. Today I'm half and half in it. And I'm just wrapping one over the other right behind that bead. And I can hope to hold that bead in place. Keep it snug. And then we're done. Except for a small bit of trimming. Whip finish it, however you want to do that. Oh, you know what I do like to do, though? You don't have to do this. If I don't do it, it'll give it a little green hot spot. But sometimes I like to do it, keep it consistent. Hit that thread with Sharpie just to keep it black at the head. I don't think the fish care one bit. And you can hit it with another.
another just dab of that flow right at the head. Get that back in there. Just seal those threads or your favorite head cement or just do a couple more whip finishes, you'll be fine. And almost done. What these legs like to do, which is totally up to you how you want them to look. It's a wrapped material, so it wants to go all over the hook shank. So what I'll do is I'll take a whip finisher, pick it out just a touch. And when I do that, sometimes the legs on the back kind of go every direction. I like to just trim that back flat. And sometimes the legs, you know, a little bit longer than they need to be for the fly you're tying. Anyway, quick little pattern. Catches tons of fish. Blast to tie. Go get some. Mm -hmm.